Hey everybody and welcome to Chairman of the Board. Today I'm talking about The Clans of Caledonia, which is a Euro economic style board game for one to four players. It takes about an hour and a half to play. Now the idea of the game is you are trying to get as many points as you can um, by basically farming different resources and competing contracts and competing end of round objectives. Um, the game plays pretty quickly in terms of um, what you do in each of your turns because you just do one simple action and those actions can be um, a number of different things such as um, putting workers down on the board which will increase your income each round. You can put different resources on the board which will kind of um, increase your production of that type of resources. So you've got a bunch of different resources such as your wheat and your, um, you've got cows and sheep which give you milk and wool in return. You can also kind of slaughter those animals to get you kind of beef or, um, or lamb. You've got um, the capability of turning the wheat into, um, into uh, alcohol or bread. So there's lots of different things you could do and um, kind of um, production lines that you can go down to get different types of resources. Um, amongst other things, you can upgrade your own unique player board, which will let you kind of um, travel around the map a bit quicker because you can um, you know, gain the ability to travel over water. You've got the ability to increase your income from your workers. Um, you can also um, do other things such as giving you more power in the kind of buying and trading phases of the game because this game does have a, an active stock market. So you've got that commodity speculation kind of aspect to it where um, you, know, you can not only harvest your own resources, but you can also um, you know, buy them straight from the market or sell them straight to the market. And obviously the more of these kind of resource queues that you, that you invest in, the more you can do that. So it's, it's pretty much about um, your management of money, you know, how you're going to spend your money most efficiently and um, to ultimately fulfill those contracts to get the points. Um, the, the game is, um, as I said, the, the, all you do is one of those actions in your turn. So, you know, turns do fly by pretty quickly. Um, it's a very much of a, a money-driven style game because when you want to place things on the board, um, not only do things on your player board have a cost to them, but also the land you're laying on also has a cost associated to it as well. And you've got kind of four different types of, um, of, of kind of land you can build on or, or kind of have to consider because you've got the your kind of fields which you can build your resources on, you've got the mountains which you can build your um, build your miners on which will give you your income and you've got your fields which will let you build your um, lumberjacks on which will give you a bit less income. Um, the end of the round objectives are, are very varied, you've got such as ones or ones that can kind of give you points based on how many resources you have in your in your pool, you've got ones based on how many um, how many workers you've got deployed on the board and all kind of different things like that, or even kind of like how many workers you've got on the edges of the board and stuff like that. So there's lots of different things you have to consider, and you can also see what kind of scoring criteria is going to come up as the game goes on. So you can plan um, in accordance to that, which is um, which is nice in terms of its strategy. Um, the the game kind of works on this aspect where you're going to keep taking actions until you run out of actions or run out of money, and you pass. And the first person to pass is going to um, take more income than the kind of following players who pass. Um, you know, in, in respect of how quick the actions are, you also have to consider that some players might run out of actions a lot quicker than other players, so you might have to sit out of the game uh, a bit longer than they want to at times, um, which is a bit of a, a you know, a bit of a double-edged sword there. Um, there's lots of things to consider in this game because, as I said, you've got the and you've got the, the resource market, you've got the contracts you want to get, and you can only ever have one contract at a time, which can be quite restrictive. Um, Obviously, when you complete these contracts, you're going to get rewards in return, um, and those rewards can be money, they can be kind of a free upgrade, they can be expanding on the map without having to pay for cost, um, but they also give you rewards based on these three different kind of um, goods that are going to score at the end of the game. So you've got your, I think it's the sugar cane, you've got the um, cotton, and you've got tobacco as well. And whenever anybody can completes a contract with any of those goods as a reward, you're going to move them up the kind of scoring track, and at the end of the game, for each, or depending on the position of each of those on the scoring track, you're going to either, either going to score four, five, or, or three points, depending on the popularity of those goods. So the rarer the ones that have been shipped, you're going to get five points each, and um, the most kind of common one that's shipped, you're going to get three points each. And that goes for all the players. So um, that's a bit of a, a strange concept. It's a bit more difficult to explain than actually it works in, in practice. Um, and personally, I thought it was a little bit, um, or that part of the game alone was a little bit overwrought and maybe could have been simplified um, to, uh, you know, just, just streamlined a bit more because it just seemed like a, a little bit convoluted for the sake of it. 
Um, but other than that, I think all the game mechanisms are, are very clean, they're very simple, you know, just do a quick upgrade, you know, get something else on the map. Um, you know, once you finish your actions, you're going to take all your produce, which is going to, you know, give you wheat and your, and your milk and your wool and stuff like that. And then you can convert them um, freely into the other goods, um, depending on what you've got placed on the map. Um, at the end of the game, you're also going to score a lot of points based on who's, um, who's completed the most contracts and also um, based on the different kind of clusters of, of farms that you have on the board. Because for every farm that you have, or every kind of, yeah, as I said, cluster that you have um, within shipping distance of each other, um, you know, whoever's got the majority of those is going to score a whole bunch of points and, um, and so on if you're second or, or third. Um, and that's something to really consider in terms of, you know, grabbing up the land that you really want. Um, there's also incentives to go to the corners of the board because when you go to those corners you um, can unlock kind of one-off abilities um, which will make, can give you you know free meat or they can give you um, you know a bunch of money or um, you know, can get contracts and stuff like that so there's lots of um, you know there's little kind of abilities you can get by building into the corners of the board and um, it incentivizes incentivizes you to do that um, and that's pretty much the flow of the game I mean you're going to score on those different things and you know it, it flows pretty pretty quickly and um, I think once you've got the rules overhead in, in your mind after a round or two it's pretty um, you know it's pretty digestible and the balance of the game is really good especially considering that every every game uh, a player is going to be um, given a unique player ability and uh, those abilities are, are quite different I mean you've got ones that can kind of give you uh, there's one ability that lets you have two contracts going at a time when you do take a contract you only have to pay for one and you can get two uh, you've got ones that can kind of let you sell milk at the end of each of your production phases for full cost so it's a good kind of money income there you've got ones that can um, you know whenever you go to the stock market and buy and sell stuff you can get it for one cheaper or sell it for one more and um, you've got ones that can kind of give you cheaper abilities to build in different in different places on the map so there's, there's lots of different um, unique abilities in the game and unique, unique player powers which make you, you know, specialise in something you can kind of, each player can manipulate to get the most out of their power to, um, you know, to specialise, which is, which is always a nice touch and can give uh, a bit more replayability to the game. Um, the, the time investment, I think, is, is pretty good. I mean, it takes about an hour and a half to play or at least around that mark, give or take. Um, but I wouldn't say it's especially quick or um, I wouldn't say outstate is welcome either. I think it's just about right. Um, so yeah, no real issue there at all. Um, I said player uptime is pretty good because the player actions are quickly, uh, go by quickly. That is the only thing that I would, I would consider is if some players are really kind of going over their moves, thinking meticulously about how they're going to spend their money and you know for a fact you're just going to spend your quick buck and do a quick upgrade, then sometimes you can be um, you know, out of the game for a bit longer than you want to be and um, you know, just be sitting there and, and you know, just, just lulling on your next move when you know what you're going to do. Um, player interaction is, is pretty loose in this one, to be honest. There's not a lot of conflict in the game. I mean, obviously you've got that, um, you know, the, the resource market, which is player driven. Um, and you've also got the, you know, the, the grabbing of the land that you want. But I think overall, that's pretty much it. There's not a lot of, um, of player interaction. Um, of course, if you want a particular contract that another player wants, then getting in there quicker might, might frustrate them. But personally, I found that there wasn't a lot of player interaction to really steer you off track and to have a huge impact on your game. Um, aesthetically, I think the game looks very nice. I mean, it's Clemens Franz art, who you know, artwork I love because he's made so much great artwork for the games I love. Um, I would say that the components are, are pretty small. I think um, it could have been 10% bigger. The, the main player board is pretty small, although it's modular, so it's nice again for replayability. Um, the, yeah, the resources, uh, the individual player resources boards are just a little bit small for my liking. Um, I could have done, as I said, being 10 to 15% bigger. Um, theme wise, I mean, it's your standard Euro farming style game. So there's not a lot of theme here, but I like the way that the resources convert into one another, you know, having the wheat to convert into the alcohol and, and the bread and stuff like that. And even just deploying the animals. And then when you want the meat, you can take the animals off the board to get that meat to fulfill those contracts. So you've got that kind of, that real farming um, feel to it. Um, the setup and teardown time is, is not too bad. I mean, you've got the player boards, which you do have to deploy all the resources on individually. And that's a little bit fiddly, but um, you know, not too burdening. Um, something that I would, I would say about the game is that I never really felt like I was ever taking extremely powerful turns. Um, I didn't really have that whole kind of 
crescendo feel to it, although you do get more powerful by deploying more resources and covering more of the board so that your income um, you know, increases each round, um, it did very much feel like it was a bit of a flat line in terms of the, the arc of the game. I didn't feel like I really ramped up and got more powerful. Um, the, the scalability, I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't play this with more than three players because again, just that downtime of waiting for other players' actions. Um, but you know, you can play a solo mode if you want to, although this solo mode is a beat your own score kind of game so it's pretty um you know it's pretty bland and it's just going to be competing against your previous scores which is not something i tend to favor um and and that's it really i mean i, I think this game is, is extremely well designed i mean there's not really much i could complain about because I, I there's so much i like about it the you know the unique player powers work well the resource market works really well um you know the, it's got your standard euro trappings in terms of saving up resources to cash in those contracts um, knowing where to hold off to do so is important because you might want those um, the resources to complete the objectives. Um, but you have to bear in mind that as the game goes on, the resource or, or the contracts to take get more expensive. So um, you know you do have to bear that in mind. Um, you know increasing your your um, travel ability is important as well because you do want to get all those different clusters of of your farms. And uh, the game also does a good job of not being able to do everything. I think um, that's something that I can say quite confidently, you know, having to, you know, if you really want to specialise in the contract, you're probably going to have to neglect something else and, and so on. So it's got that ability that you can kind of focus on something else each time, although I do feel like there's not a whole lot of, of scope to explore in terms of different strategies and stuff. Um, but yeah, overall, this game is well designed, it's well put together, I can see why it's so well received. Um, but the only problem I had with it, I felt like it didn't have the the highs and lows of, of what I want in the game. It's very much quite, as I said, quite flatlined. Um, there was no real moments of excitement. There was no real moments of having, you know, where I felt like I played really well or had a really strong and powerful turn that I built up to. So in that respect, it fell a little bit flat for me. But I don't want that to be a condemnation of the game because, again, it's so well put together and I did have a good time playing it. However, I don't think it'll be something that I'll kind of seek to or actively request to play again. Um, although if someone did kind of recommend or, or suggest playing it with me, then I would, I would happily play, play it. So um, certainly um, not a negative review whatsoever. I enjoyed my play of this one, but it falls at about a 7 out of 10 for me, where if I'm looking to play an hour and a half to two hour game, I want to play uh, you know an 8 or a 9 out of 10, um, obviously, or a 10 out of 10 at this point. So it just feels a little bit under par for me or... That, that's going to really kind of, you know, get my excitement going and, you know, I didn't really feel like, um, you know, I had the urge to come back to this one. But yeah, a solid game, Clans of Caledonia, and um, one that I think a lot of people are going to recommend, especially if you don't like um, any conflict in, in your game and you like the resource market and stuff like that. This one does do that well. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. And for everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.